And we're live. Welcome to SAS Bites, episode 21. This is your weekly bite of SAS during your lunch break. I am Micah Godbolt. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter down there at Micah Godbolt. Uh, you can also follow SAS Bites directly at SAS Bites on Twitter. Catch up on uh, past episodes at uh, youtube.com slash SAS Bites. That was right. Uh, today we're going to be talking about source maps, uh, which is a really cool new feature in SAS 3.3. And kind of related to that, uh, we're going to talk about Chrome Workspace uh, specifically, um, how we can uh, use the Chrome browser to um, get into our code and actually make changes um, right inside the browser and pretty much just um, skip the, um, the IDE altogether. So uh, we're going to jump right into that um, go into the screen share of Doom. All right. Here we go. All right, so we have got a little website that I'm working on at the moment. And um, we've got it all basically set up, ready to go. Um, what we're going to talk about first is um, <clears throat> is the Chrome Web um, workspaces. So to get into that, I'm just going to walk you through this process real quick. It's like a two, three step process. A little convoluted, but you can get it done. Um, with the inspector open, you hit the little gear, and you can go to workspaces. And this is um, uh, this is regular release. This isn't Canary or anything. So anyone should be able to do this with uh, with Chrome. So what we're going to do is we're going to add folders. We're going to add a workspace. And we're just going to find the folder that this website is sitting in. Of course, it seems to be a local website. And it's going to ask me for permission to access the folder. So basically, now Chrome can talk to that folder directly. There's one more thing that we need to do to kind of get this all wired up. Uh, let's see, in sources, let's just refresh, make sure I'm good. We need to go down to style sheets and right click and then map to file system resources. And you can see it's automatically going to do a quick search for you on screen.css, and it's going to find this screen.css. Don't connect to the map or anything else, just regular screen.css. So we're connecting the file system screen.css to the style sheet that the website is seeing. So you know, this is running on the, like a map head. So we're going to click on that, and it's going to restart um, uh, the inspector. So um, what we can do now um, is actually a couple things. Let me do a couple last settings. What we're going to want to do is, uh, well, in general, we're going to want to enable source maps right here um, so that our source mapping can work later. And also auto load generated CSS. Because um, what's happening right now is I've got Compass running in the background watching stuff. So uh, with this auto reload CSS, it will actually um, do like the live reload for you without having to use live reload or any other of those um, those programs to automatically update your uh, up the browser. Um, this only works for CSS. It's not going to work as I'm going to show you for JavaScript or for PHP or HTML. Uh, so in that case, um, uh, live reload uh, application or CodeKit or any of those other live reload um, uh, software will probably be your best bet. But this can at least do CSS. So let's make sure those things are turned on right there. All right, so what this means I can do, um, and let's just jump into my variables folder, and then you see that it has a really nice little uh, fuzzy search. Uh, looks like it's not quite fuzzy. Looks like it starts, oh, no, no. Uh, R, D, A, B, yeah, I can find, so fuzzy search. So really nice. Um, so just if you're using, like, familiar with um, a Sublime Text, really easy to find a file and hop into it. So here we've got a file. And I can change this grid padding from 20 to 40 and hit save. Sweet, live demo worked. All right, I uh, had a moment of, of stress there for a second. So you, you can see our grid changed automatically just by inspecting the file within Chrome, hitting save, and then letting our, our compass watch in the background um, run and, um, and update that. So no needing to jump back over to... Um, uh, to some of your editor and sublime text or anything, you can make the edits right in here. So like if you want to see, okay, this white variable, I wonder where that white variable is all being used. Uh, let's make it pink. And <laughs> we can easily find out what everything is actually white. So you can see all the whites pop over to pink. So stuff like that. You can, you can go to a file within your file system. You can see my file system right on the left here. Um, make an edit to it and then um, uh, the SAS watch or Compass watch will recompile and bring that back in either by that uh, uh, watch for CSS changes or your live reload. 
Um, this not only works on, on uh, SAS files, but it works on JavaScript as well. So if I go to my... I remember what the name of the file is called. Go to my JavaScript, my main JavaScript. All right, so I have got this little rotator that's going around every six seconds. Let me change that to one second. That fast. So the live reload kicked in. I can just make a change to the JavaScript, and it kicks in there. Um, I can go to my navigation PHP partial, and I can say um, destinations away. I can make a change there, and you can see the change automatically um, changes on the screen for you. So really, really handy if you want to go and make a quick change. Um, if you just want to do your tweaks here, so rather than like if somebody gives you a lot of like little tiny things needed to be changed, rather than having to boot up the entire um, editing process in your IDE, this is a great place to come and, and make those quick changes and easily be able to see you know, what those changes do uh, to your screen. Um, so any of these files, we can edit all the partials, all of the SAS, all that, and uh, it's just going to get built right back in. Um, now, your challenge might be, though, like, say, I want to change this um, oh, uh, button is a good example, this button down here. Um, and you might think, like, okay, I'll go to wherever that class or wherever the uh, partial is and find the button and make changes to it. Well, you get to the partial, and you find that the button has an include statement. You're like, great, all right. So now we have to go to the mixins partial and find the mixin. And once you get to the mixin, you find there's actually a variable there that's actually set in that color, which is set somewhere else. So sometimes you can go down this, this long rabbit trail of trying to find where that thing's actually specified, especially if it's a variable being called by a mixin or called in an extend or something like that. So um, what we can do uh, with that is employ the set the uh, the SAS source maps. So uh, a couple quick things. Um, let me show you how you're going to compile with source map. Um, you can do just regular compile. Oops, get back down here. Oh, that's not what I was wanting. <laughs> Uh, let's see if I can get back to it real quick. Uh, that went the completely wrong direction. All right. So let's see if I can remember exactly how it goes. So we're going to do SAS. Actually, one thing about this is with Compass, um, I'm going to show you the Compass one and why. It's just really weird. Um, all right, live demos, good. Um, actually, let me see if it's just right up here. And there's a bunch of, uh, a couple things about this. SAS, um, um, let me just find it because I don't want to have to type it out again. Um, SAS, uh, source maps require SAS 3.3, and there's some changes in 3.3 that, um, uh, that will affect um, variables. So I'm getting some deprecation warnings here because the SUSE hasn't been updated um, yet, and it's going to be very soon. So as soon as that changes, and oh my, okay, it's going to be way up here, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it. Um, so I guess I get to write it again. All right, so that's what all those warnings are all about. So SAS, watch, compass, uh, source, map, and then we need to give the folder, which is SAS, screen.scss uh, to style sheets, and then you know why I didn't want to type this all out over again. Style sheets, screen.css. Um, all right, so what I was saying. Um, so for this feature, you're going to need SAS 3.3, which is the reason for the de deprecation warnings. If you want to be running Compass, I'm pretty sure the new uh, 1.0 uh, release of Compass is going to be required. Um, so what I'm trying to do is click here. Oh, my word. All right. This is just killing me. All right, so the point is I needed... Let me see if it's something to do with this. Nope. Okay. I do not know what that's all about. Um, so for Compass, it's going to require using sudo, at least right now, um, with spriting. Um, for some reason, um, at least it can use can require sudo. Um, and that's going to basically give you the super user privileges to, to get into file systems and stuff like that. It was a bug I ran into earlier. So um, let's go Compass. Watch, and we're going to do source maps, 
source map. Okay, and then once again, our target and our destination. So uh, SAS screen, and you might just fast forward through this part. Um, style sheets. Uh, CSS, and we'll see if we get it. Of course, it's sudo, so I need a password. Sweet. <laughs> All right. Our typical de deprecation warnings. All right, so I got through that. So um, just to note um, what that was, and this is just making it really hard to. Here we go. So sudo, uh, so sass, we're going to do our compass flag, so we actually look at our config RB. We're going to do dash dash watch, so it continues to watch while you make changes. And the source map flag means it's going to create our source map file um, while we do it. Um, and then with a, a, a SAS watch command, you do need to pass in the input and output uh, files. Um, so what that's going to do is it's going to create our screen.css file, but it's also going to create this .map file. Uh, and this .map file, um, let's take a quick look at that if we have time. Um, And that map. All right. As you can see, is this long, long string of uh, text. I'm sure it goes way off the edge there. It's basically just um, a lot of code mapping the elements in the CSS file to the, the file structure and the elements within um, your, uh, your SAS files. All right. So with that aside, let's take a look at this again. Um, so what we can do, we know that we've got our... our um, our workspace set up. So we can easily make changes within the browser and see those changes come to life. So for example, if I want to make some changes to, um, uh, to this navigation item, I can inspect it. And I can go to this A tag. And a couple things straight off the bat, and I kind of mentioned last week, we can see that uh, main navigation um, partial has some of these base styles. And then there's a link extend I'm using. So I'm using extend here for a lot of like the actual styles of the, of the um, of the text. So if I want to jump over to this main navigation, I can click that, but that's boring. If I want to go directly to this line height, because I need to adjust that line height, I can go ahead and hold down command and click on line height, and it's going to jump me right to this line height number. And you can see it's using a little function that calculates um, um, pixels, m's from pixel values. So I can drop that down to 28 and hit save. And that same thing is going to happen. I'm still compass compiling, and you can see it shrink right up. So that was the first change they wanted us to do. The other thing they want us to change the color of the font. Now, if we look back at that main navigation again, it doesn't say anything about color here. There's no color, but there's this extend, which we'd have to jump and find. So um, it's really easy. We can go over here and just find the color. And we can click on color. And we can see color is, is a lighter version of black. I'm like, great. All right. We have another variable, as I said, going down this rabbit hole. So instead, if we really want to change the color, specifically the color, the best thing to do is, is command click directly on that color variable or color value. Because that's going to jump. Oh, in this case it doesn't. Really? All right. It should. Oh, you know, because it's probably because it's going through the lighten feature. Um, I can do it better with, let me show with this background. So we've got this wrapper. So I can click on this. So it, I think the problem is the, the color actually changes before it gets displayed. But if I do this background blue, it's going to jump me right to um, my variables file, and I can make that change. So I can change our background to pink, because everyone loves good pink background. There we go. Um, so a couple uh, caveats and notes. Um, there are some things that don't work quite uh, quite perfectly yet. I know I'm using Suzy for my layout. Um, and if I go to, um, let's see, here, you can see here's all this layout stuff. Um, let's just go inside of it. Here's my slider. Uh, you know, width of 69% is what Suzy's calculating for that. Um, if I try and go to width, I believe it's going to, oh, it looks like it's not even doing anything. Basically, those those um, things aren't mapped properly, partially because Suzy is outside of my file structure. It might actually do if it's inside my, my file structure. Uh, it's a gem on my computer that's not currently mapped in Chrome, so it doesn't know where to find it. Um, and maybe there's going to be some better um, um, features coming in in Suzy 2.0 once that comes around. Um, so that is that. But I can jump over here and change the actual layout of it. Say I only want it to be six wide instead of seven. 
and we'll still go through and do the calculation of that and make it smaller. So, as you can see, there's lots of things we can do in here just to quickly, easily make changes directly on our live site by inspecting the element that we want to change, like this My Account. We can see it's getting color from color F. Now, if we want all of the, if we want everything that's changed to uh, color F uh, or to white to change to something different, we can do that. Um, if we want to change this color, we can jump over to there and change it to a different variable. So you see we went to color, it went to the actual like color declaration. If we clicked on the white, it would go to variables. So I can go ahead and just change these to like blue, which is a horrible link color, of course, but we, so we can do that as well. Boom, blue. All right, so that gives you a quick rundown, <laughs> too many pinks, of what we can do with a combination of uh, with source maps to be able to map our style, uh, style declarations and files to um, the actual SAS files, the actual SAS partials, because you see I've got a lot of partials here. And then we can also use Chrome Workspace and set that up so that we can edit directly within Chrome, save those files, and it will automatically update um, automatically update with the CSS. You can do JavaScript and PHP and other files as well. Um, and if you're using your live reload, it'll automatically do those for you as well. So some great features, a great way for maybe a designer to get in and be able to start making some changes because they can see things and see where that, um, that change is coming from and tweak it and see what the effect's going to be. Uh, so there's some really great use cases out there that kind of are browser-first design changes rather than code-first. So um, certainly check it out. Um, if you have any questions, ping me. I, I was just kind of playing around with it this morning. Um, but uh, yeah, it works well. Uh, it's in stable Chrome, and uh, it's, it does require SAS 3.3, which I believe is still in beta, as well as Compass 1.0, which is in beta. Uh, you don't need Compass... Uh, to do source maps, but if you're using a Compass project, obviously you're going to need to, uh, which Susie and, and those kind of things are relying on. So, uh, so that's what we've got today. Um, I'll jump over Q and A's. Make sure, hey, we got a couple things. Um, so let's see. Source maps are a feature of SAS. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Jelmer Borst asked if they're a, a part of SAS and not Compass. So, exactly right. Um, that source maps are part of SAS. So if you're not doing a Compass project, you can just exclude that dash dash Compass from that commands, and you'll get the exact same thing just without dealing with the config RB and all that kind of stuff. Um, and also someone asked about Chrome Canary if that's required, um, and no, this is actually in stable now, um, but you do need to have CSS um, source maps turned on in settings to make sure that, that works for you. So awesome. Thanks for questions, guys. Um, I hope you got a lot out of that. Sorry about my iTerm going crazy and not doing back scroll very well. Um, I appreciate you sticking through it, and um, if you need to watch it again, watch it again. If you need to ask me questions, be happy to. Um, limitations, network drive. Um, should be able to probably do ne network drive. I certainly have not played around with it yet. Uh, Kevin Muncy was asking. Um, I, can, uh, I can give it a try pretty quick, but any place that um, your system has like file access to, I'm guessing would probably work fine. Uh, if you're on a remote server, you're probably going to need to have a pretty specific setup to make that happen. Um, uh, I'm sure you could probably get it set up uh, like on a remote server, and that'd be kind of a fun experiment. So, um, anyway, uh, I'll check that out and I'll see if I can. I'll post about that if it works on a on a network drive and see how that goes. So, anyway, thanks again for everyone watching. Appreciate you sticking through the foibles, and we will catch you next week. See you later. <laughs>